Hi friends, welcome to today's video. Uh, we'll show you today how I start with the exercise in IGP, which is the Revere. Um, I have different setups for different ages. I start, for example, with small tents and later I go on to big tents with the older dogs. And um, I'm gonna show you how I build it up from the beginning to an experienced dog. Let's go. So, like I said before, I start with puppies or young dogs with small tents. Um, you can either buy them or just do them by yourself. Um, they are a lot smaller. You can lure a little bit uh, to the tent. So it's better than to have a big tent. I have two sticks, two white sticks. Why do I have them? Um, I want the dog to come in very close to the tent and I want the dog to look inside the tent and later I want him to go very fast um, right next to the tent to the next tent. So here I have the same thing, a self-made tent, two sticks and um, yeah we will go on from the right tent to the left tent to show the dog I must go around and I must go close around. That's why I have those white sticks. Okay, um, I will show you my setup now with the big tents. So here we have our big tents. They are later used for the trials in the IGP, in the IGP 1, 2 and 3. Um, I have the same setup as with the small tents. I have two white sticks. One is here, one is on the other side. And you can see the difference in the size. So if I have a puppy, they must go around this tent. This is a much longer way and I cannot lure over the tent to show the dog where to go. So that's why I use the small ones. Yeah, uh, I have two sticks, one for the entrance and one for the next tent to go very fast and very close to the tent. In IGP, we have those tents. We have in the IGP one, we have only one tent where the dog has to go around and the next tent is the tent where the helper stands in. And in IGP2, we have um, three tents. And in IGP3, we have five tents always plus the helper tent where the helper stands in. So maybe you wonder, mm, in which direction should I send my dog? Let's say it does not really matter. If, you go, uh, if your dog goes around here first, or the other way around. So you have to decide which way fits your way the best or what does the dog like the most. So my dogs normally go around here, come here and they, they run like an eight. You know, they're going like this and then the other way around to the other tent. But like I said, it does not really matter in, in the end. Okay, I would say I take my puppy and I will show you with the small tents how I build up the rivier. So here we have my uh, ex herder puppy. He's now 13 weeks old, nearly. Uh, he has never seen the IGP tents. Uh, and to be honest, he also does not need to see them because he will do the monitoring. But uh, I think it's good for the dog and for the dog's mind to see different things. Um, yeah, so we will see how it goes. All right, so we are right next to the tents. I'm gonna give the dog the cue to work and we will see what the dog does, what the dog offers us. Abit. But first I'll let him explore a little bit, the camera and the tents. Then I'm just gonna click a little bit so the dog knows, ah, the tents are a point of interest. Just let him a little bit explore himself, by himself, what the tents do. You can also take a little bit of food with a high value. I'm just gonna show him a little bit where to go. I'm gonna lure him a little bit around, yeah boy, to make him understand what I want from him. So I take uh, food in both of my hands because this is easier later for the luring I can lure him there with the left hand here and I can switch to the right hand and give the dog the food. 
so it makes it easier for you. King of the road, trader of sailoring. Man, trader of sailoring. And it's important in the beginning that you have a food that has a high value for the dog, so the dog gets crazy, <laughs> crazy for the exercise. Yes. You can also use uh, a marker with your voice, or you can use a clicker like I do um, when the dog does what you want him to do. So you mark the behavior, this is what I want from you. The dog will understand, aha, uh -huh, this is the exercise. And you see, with the sticks, the dog is going right next to the tents and not walking around too much. So, and this is an exercise we don't do too long in the beginning. So the dog is not losing his interest because you saw the dog already lost a little bit the interest in the exercise walking around, looking around, and the food was not so important anymore. One more time. Reward the dog one more time on the left side. And that's it for today. This is how I build up my revere exercise. In the beginning with a puppy, there's nothing fancy, it doesn't look perfect, and it's a lot of luring, and um, I, very fast, I switch from luring to shaping, because I think if you lure the dog too long, the dog's relying on your luring and not focusing on the actual exercise. But in the beginning, I'm just, I just have to show the dog what I want from him when I have a complex exercise like Revere, he does, he has to go right next to the sticks around the tent, and that's a lot of uh, and that's a complicated exercise in the beginning for a dog to figure out by himself. So that's why I'm showing him and later I will go away from the luring and just let him figure it out by himself. So now I have my Doberman. Uh, he is already trialed in IGP as his IGP3. So he must know what's going on with the tents, but I haven't done it in a long time. So I will check today if you still can do how I told him. Um, yeah, I start a little bit closer with the tents just for uh, exercise purposes. And um, I'm gonna show you how I build it up or how I make sure the exercise is still going like I want to with, uh, with him, yeah. He's now nearly six years old. Uh, he's retired from sport because he also has cancer and um, I just do some exercise with him for fun because he loves to work. And uh, if I take the work away from him, he would go crazy. Huh? <laughs> so right now, right now, I give him the cue to work. Arbeit. Unclip the collar, and then we'll start from here. Okay. Cool. In IGP, you have, if you're ready, tell the judge you're ready, you raise your hand, and then you send the dog. Here. Here. And as you can see, the dog still knows, aha, uh -huh, I have to go close to the tents uh, between the tent and the sticks. Push. Check again. Show the dog. Revier. Here. Gonna mark the behavior and I will check the other side. Push. 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 Revier. Here. Aha. Uh -huh. What you saw now is the dog was thinking about going a little bit further away, but then remembered, aha, uh -huh, I have to go between the tent and the stick. So it was a good exercise for him again. Now I'm going to check two tents. Push. Revier. Here. Revier. Here. And you see the dog still knows what's going on, so I think that's good. And um, come here. Click the thing. what I want to show you is we want the dog 
to go full speed to the tent and then take the brakes, as you can see here. Here my dog took a break and then was going around the tent, you can see on the, on the ground. And here he gave again full speed. So this is exactly how we want to teach the dog to revere. In high IGP trials uh, on uh, nationals or international levels, you see the dogs coming fast in the, in the tent and then they look inside the tent and when there's nothing in, they go around the next tent. How you teach that? You have two options. The first is if you have more than one helper, you can place one helper in each tent. So the dog's looking inside the tent if the helper's there. Or you put a ball inside the tent or a bite tuck or something else. So the dog's looking inside the tent. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, if you like the video, if you like my content, please give me a like, share my video, subscribe to my channel, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.